up here in the top right location. Give it up for the Africa Freaks trap. And his opponent hanging on here in the lower side. Give it up for Shopify Rebellions. Bion. The best way I can uh, describe this kind of series is definitely unstoppable force uh, meets unstoppable force as in these guys are definitely very aggressive players overall so while i'm not expecting it in this first game i certainly am waiting for the three racks versus the uh, blink stalker play at some point in this series but right now everything's looking pretty normal here we do see trap getting this kind of safety cybernetics core which will allow him to kind of tech up a little bit quicker before getting down his natural nexus also being a little bit of a nuisance right here as he is just denying beyond a little bit of time on that first command center now beyond has not built any scouting units just yet instead focusing on getting out that first marine and going straight into the reactor pretty standard pretty simple uh, as this does allow you to kind of just stay safe versus this first adept which is coming out how's Bion doing these days uh, his team actually did pretty well for him uh, took care of him and uh, helped get him some help for his uh, wrist issues so hopefully he's feeling a lot better and we do see as well we might have the blink versus three racks a little bit early here as we do have the three racks started for Bion and the twilight council on the other side oh my goodness this game is about to pop off as this adept just really wants to get in there and get any sort of information it's gonna settle for a short delay of literally 0.1 seconds the depth should be able to get out of here at the very last second and there you go so not the most worthwhile investment right there he did take a lot of a damage on that adept so it's not going to be as useful later on before its shields recharge but at the end of the day it, it got into Bion's head he lost an SCV and a marine so there you go so now it's pretty much just kind of this slow build up here as we do have those additional gateways coming in blink has started and i think this is going to be really bad for Bion, just because he doesn't have any splash at this time and as well he has not started marauder production because he has no idea that this is coming again he hasn't even left his base so far he has no idea what his opponent is coming up uh, coming into and so all trap has to do is um, really just tr not even trade out because he doesn't like he doesn't really need to trade out trade out but he's gonna get a really really good trade here that's Especially if Bion moves out like this, I think that's going to be a little bit of an issue because Trap can kind of just slow this down with these first couple of Stalkers. Although Blink, not done just yet. Another second to go. There we have it. There is no concussive shells on those Marauders, but you can already see Bion taking losses on this force, meaning that he will have to back off for right now. Behind this, you know, the good thing for Trap is he's not really overextending with it either. He's going straight into Immortal production for some safety. As having that Immortal as a little bit of a bullet sponge will help out quite well. Especially with how late 
uh, Bion is going to have kind of his tech up and rolling. Charge now on the way. As he will be eh, just kind of diversifying his portfolio. Uh, Bion as well, just kind of getting rid of that observer, getting rid of some of that vision of trap. And he's still going to try and make this work, it looks like, here. But the Stalker's getting a little bit too close for comfort. They will be able to get out of there. Got to be careful, though. That was a very small mistake that could have cost him quite a bit. Looks like Trap, though, is getting ready for his own little move out here. As the Warp Prism about to finish up, that should time out pretty nicely with Charge. One thing we can kind of notice as well, Byun's production for this stage in the game isn't very robust. He only has three, uh, three racks producing right now, only just now starting his third CC as well. So he's got to be very careful with his forces. Uh, if he doesn't, uh, if he doesn't take a good fight right now, he's going to fall super far behind. And Trap could probably just push and win after that. But here we go. Force fields are pretty good. Gets a couple of the Marauders to start things out. Still no Zealots on the field. He is waiting for Charge to finish. We also have a small attack going into the uh, natural here. Force field doing what it can, but that should be able to get cleaned up. Maybe a little bit more costly for Trap than he would like. Lost a couple of additional stalkers there for free. At the end of the day, Bjorn is going to be forced back. Trap uh, might be overextending here just a little bit as we do see the Marauders making it a very painful um, overextension here. All those stalkers going down, just taking a look. It's actually 2,300, 2300 uh, minerals. Overall. But now the thing is, there's just a little bit too much uh, gateway here for Bion. So he is going to be forced back into his own base for the meantime. Stalker went a little bit too far forward. But now behind this trap, all he has to do is keep on a little bit of this pressure. He does not need to go in here. This is a very well fortified position for our Terran player. Wintermind's doing what they can. Actually getting some really nice Zealot uh, connections right there. Marauder's doing a really good job being kited back as well. The force field's doing what they can. And still quite a bit of damage going down. Uh, Zealots now starting to break through and with the reinforcements coming on in, the Liberators Still not sieged up. SEVs are pulled, so he will lose about six of them. But again, overall, Trap doesn't really have that kind of death ball right now. And I really do like that he is trying to not overextend, trying to do just a little bit of a fighting retreat to trade out. Because back at home, again, he is still up a base. And he's got his uh, storm on the way. He's got his upgrades coming on in. Byun, he is at plus one right now, so taking a fight would be pretty bad for Trap. But, uh, yeah, I think Byun might be moving out once again. But, uh, yeah, even with a small amount of units here, just having that extra tech is going to be a really, really powerful. It's actually the first time I've seen uh, Byun go into this amount of Liberators as well in a while here. Oh. Yeah, that... That, um... You hate to see it. Storm's gonna go down. Actually hits the High Templars more than the Bio. What am I to do get set up in some pretty pristine locations. One more Storm gonna blanket this army. Uh, shield Battery Overcharge is gonna be popped but killed off here. And there's not a lot left here for Trap, I think. Just a couple small mistakes have cost him this one. As the Archon goes down, these Zealots are going to do what they can, but that is not a lot. GG is all. 
down here in the bottom right corner of the map. Give it up for the Afrika Freaks. He is trapped. And his opponents up here in the top left. Give it up for the Shopify Rebellions. Beyond. And Hydra E2 coming in with the tier one subscription. Thank you for the subscribe. You are awesome, my man. You are saving esports. Now, taking a look at how this is going, looks like Beyond. Yeah, gonna be a little bit cheeky here. This is something that he really does enjoy doing. Just dropping down the engineering bay. It's a, a relatively small commitment early on. Only about 125 minerals and you do get 75 of them back. And so just getting that is really, really nice. Although it could, in some instances, force Bion into... Uh, or force trap into a more aggressive strategy here as we do see already that uh, first zealot is getting popped out to deal with it he's getting the cybernetics core and honestly with such a short rush distance that can be really risky because we have seen some protoss players with just a one zealot two stalker harassment really slow down the terran player quite heavily now, Bion is ready for this, I'd like to say, because he does have his factory before natural CC. And also just going to get a little bit of scouting information as well, just confirming that there is no proxy out on the map here. Yeah, you, yeah, you can definitely tell that Bion is a little bit, a little bit scared. Um... Because he is just going to be building that natural CC up there on the high ground. That does kind of delay his economy slightly. But eh, not really enough to worry about here. As we do see Trap going into the Stargate. Three O Byun into 4-3 Trap incoming. Eh. I don't I don't think Trap will get to that point. Uh, I'm sure he'll be taking a game before 3-0. Anyway, we do have the Phoenix production started here. Cyclone, a safety Cyclone back at home. Uh, maybe just expecting the Oracle, expecting the Stargate play on this shorter map. That does get confirmed that the Cyclone is indeed there, though, by that probe. And now... Really comes the game of mind games. I gotta say, Bion is very fearless with his first Cyclone here. Um, one thing about Curious Minds that you can kind of notice is it's going to be really important for these guys to control the uh, control the Zelnaga Watchtowers just because of their positioning. But uh, yeah, Bion has to be careful. He's got to bring that Cyclone home. He doesn't really have a ton here. Uh, to deal with this force. Cyclone is going to get lifted up, so it's not going to really be too useful in this fight, but the Adepts getting focused down. Uh, some good pullback from Trap, so he's not really going to lose a, t a whole lot of them. In the end, he will lose both of the Cyclones here, almost. Oh, I think he ran out of energy right there, so the Cyclone will live to see another day. But honestly, that does slow down Bion as he was trying to move out there. Now these Phoenix are really just going to control the skies, control the map for quite a bit of time while Bion has to repower up his army. Looks like he wasn't even really mining on his natural either. That's re that's uh that's risky. Like, just the fact that he wasn't really getting his max economy out there. Uh, I'd like to see that income tab a little bit. Yeah. It doesn't seem like the biggest of deals, but this early on, an income advantage like that is huge. And now, Trap coming in here, getting some really nice uh, kills. Five workers going down. That is a big loss for Bion.
trap as well. Not going to overextend with these Phoenix. He's just going to keep them around for right now. Not building any more as he goes up to Twilight Council. And uh, he should just be teching up behind this really nice mine play right there. But unfortunately, you do need two mines to deal with the Phoenix. Now Bion just kind of sitting on back here. A little bit of a Mexican standoff between these two. I'm very curious as to um, the fact that we're not really going to be seeing any Colossi out for the meantime. There is no Robo facility on the field. Uh, so instead Trap is just going to be going into very heavy uh, gateway production. Uh, with these charge lots, I did not see a forge, so he's not going to be starting his upgrades anytime soon, I don't imagine. Okay, there we go. The forge drops instantly right there. Uh, especially when you're going uh, for heavy gateway production, you do need to kind of have a little bit of a lead on those upgrades. If you can get it at this point, um, Beyond will have that plus one a lot quicker. But hold that thought as we do have a move out here at 50 army supply for Beyond. Now the question is, when will Trap get wind of this? It looks like the answer is right about now. And so he's going to have a lot of time to kind of prepare for this, uh, for this push. He's getting his Templar Archive, so he will be able to have some Archons to soak up damage. Uh, the Phoenix... Still, still around. You know, he might want to send those across the map and do a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, economic damage during all this. But Stim going on down. He's going to pick off uh, one very quickly here. The force fields at the top of the ramp. Going to delay some of these units from coming on up. But the main army can't really engage into this just yet. As Bion sets up a really nice position here. But unfortunately, as the Widow Mines do go down, it looks like Trap will be able to kind of chase this back. That army is getting oranger and oranger by the time. And a couple of additional warpins of those zealots should be enough to kind of keep Bion back for right now. But it looks like Bion doesn't really care about what's going on here. He just wants to keep this going. And that's kind of Bion's thing. He keeps that forward momentum. He continuously trades out here, knowing that his opponent is going to have a harder time replenishing this army. But there we go. First couple of Archons here, finally getting into some of that gas. A bank that he had built up here. What am I? A couple of them getting okay connections, not the best here. But now with the Archons in the front, they are soaking up quite a bit of damage. Trap just has to not overextend right now. Bion still up over 20 army supply here. If we take a look at the battle report, still relatively low stakes for both sides. As we do have Bion kind of just deciding to pull back, defend his third base for a small amount of time. Get a little bit more here. A couple of nice pickoffs on the Phoenix as well. Where is Taste Toastus? Uh, unfortunately, Taste Toastus couldn't be here for this one. Uh, don't worry, we got a casting duo. We got a good casting duo right here. Me and my multiple split personalities. Anyway, Bion still kind of rotating around the Phoenix, trying to slow this, but there's no real way that they can fight it. Trap. He's got his army down here, but the Archon's a little bit too far forward. Force, a good force field, though. Going to trap a lot of Beyond's units. So this is actually not too bad. But it looks like these guys are actually just going to trade out quite a bit here. Back at home, a nice little Zealot run by as well. Going to really cut through some of the economy of Beyond once again. The ghosts 
hanging out in the bunker. They don't want anything to do with this right now. And now Trap, he's kind of just slowly taking control of the map, slowly pushing his forces out, while also slowly bleeding off his Phoenix. Uh, that might look like a mistake, but he is tactic, uh, tactically losing these Phoenix to the Widow Mines so that he can have more supply for, uh, for his ground army. I'm trying to help you out, Trap. Uh, don't make me, don't make me regret it. Okay, there we go. He's he's uh, tactically losing his Phoenix so that he can remake them with a fresh coat of paint. It's like those guys who buy a, a new cell phone every year. But he's got to have the newest model of Phoenix uh, with surround sound, uh, the best avionics, all that good stuff. So keep in mind, during all of this, Bion has not built an armory at any stage here so he is really relying on plus one to push him through this is not necessarily fully all in but this is almost as all in as you can get for Bion just pumping out these units without any support so far though it looks like it's working for him the Archon stuck in the back fighting out of range of that shield battery the Phoenix doing what they can and there's there wasn't really a ton of anti-air fighting him But there we go. One un one additional zealot uh, warp in here should be enough to push this back. Kind of see the army in the orange, so he's gonna have to pull back for a second to heal. Uh, Beyond also be below 100 supply. I don't think these guys have gone up above 150 supply at any point here. Looks like a pretty big run by as well going on. 35 SCVs going down. I actually missed that. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Widow Mines doing what they can versus the Phoenix in the front, but uh, Trap actually just using them for friendly fire damage. That is epic play right there. That one Archon staying alive for as long as he did. Doing pretty darn well for himself, and that will tie up the series. Yeah, I'm not really expecting anything too crazy in, out of this game. Starting. Oh, right. There we go. But, uh, I think out of Stargate versus Twilight Council, I do think that uh, Twilight Council. I think Twilight Council is going to be the better option here. While we do have a bit of room for the Phoenix to kind of dance around in, um, I, I just don't think there's they have a ton of utility on this map. Also, yeah, it's 1-1. One, one. I just forget to hit the button sometime. But, yeah, so far we're not seeing a lot here. Trap, once again, just going for kind of the safety cyber next core. It allows him to get that warp gate out a lot quicker and just gonna chrono out that first adept so that he can get so that he can uh, kind of get a little bit of a uh, damage in here but once again Bion just kind of skipping that early reaper skipping the scouting information and uh, that kind of tells me I think he's gonna go three racks oh wait he got the reaper I'm You could tell it's early, and that I haven't cast in a while. So the Reaper comes on in here, sees the Adept. We'll actually get a pretty cheeky little kill right there on that first probe. But behind this, that one Adept, a little nice little move there from Beyond, trying to keep that SCV alive. There you have it. We got the Twilight Council down. We got Blink on the way. So Trap is going to be very aggressive right here. And right now, Bion is not really set up for it. He does have his um, uh, factory down. He does have his starport ready to go. But he doesn't have any splash right now. He's setting up for a Widow Mine drop. Uh, yeah. 
It's not necessarily a build order loss at this point, but yeah, without a siege tanks, without something to kind of deal with stalk uh, these stalkers, you're gonna ha you're gonna have a bad time. And he spent a lot of additional minerals just getting out that Hellion, uh, the medevac as well. He doesn't have stim on the way. He doesn't have any more than just one Rax. And now he's even going to lose a lot of health on that Hellion. You gotta say, not a... Not a huge fan of these of this uh, matchup. Just in terms of the build orders. Trying to get it in there with the Widow Mines as well. He will be deflected. Uh, at this point... Has he seen the Robo Facility? Oh no, he hasn't seen the Robo Facility. He hasn't seen the Twilight Council. He is still completely in the dark as to what's going on here. His first tank will be on the way though. With a Banshee. God, he's just going for everything under the sun. I don't know if that's really going to help him or not. But now for Trap. Looks like he's just going to keep this defensive for the meantime. Uh, not dropping down any additional uh, gateways, uh, so to speak. Instead, just going to go straight up to Colossi. Darn, I was kind of, I was kind of, I was kind of hoping for the aggression because that would have been uh, probably his best bet to uh, win the game early. But the Banshee does get taken down. A really nice pick off there for Trap. The Widow Mines do get the Burrow, but actually losing a Sentry right there. That's a little bit more expensive than a Probe. I mean, you see Bjorn, he is moving on out one SCV. He's going to be bunkering up here. Trap does see this. He's got his Observer in play. Nice little concave here set up for Trap as well. So the Siege Tank's not really going to get the best amount of damage. The Immortals as well just going to dive on top. And this is a pretty easy cleanup for Trap. I don't want to say that's GG just yet because we have seen Bjorn come back from worse situation here. But that was pretty bad. Especially since it does look like he is just going to stick with two bases for the meantime. I uh, might go up to a third here really soon, but that's going to be a little bit late. And we've kind of seen in the last couple of games, he has cut his upgrades very, very hard. Once he gets that plus one, he does he hasn't cared to go up to any further and instead just trying to really keep the aggression going, which has not served him well in the last game. Do it. He's going to have to get a little bit... He's going to have to get a little bit uh, cheeky here. By taking that gold base, that should help him keep... Kind of keep uh, up e economically here. Still going with the drop plays. I like it. It's not bad, but... Uh, a trap just really not allowing him any sort of room to get any damage done, so... Currently taking a look at the worker supply here. 65 to 55. And yeah, Bjorn is just going to be trying to push in here. He's got some marauders. He's got some good Widowmine placement as well. There's actually no zealots with this. Did he get charge? He does have charge, but he doesn't have any zealots with this army just yet. Already, what are the Widowmines going down? A good concave on these Marines, but that is a lot of withering fire on these Colossi. Now it's just left to the Marauders. But there's not really that much buffer left for the Colossi. Looks like it's going to be a very scrappy fight, but at the end of the day, Trap just has a little bit too much as Beyond dips below 100 supply. That upgrade advantage as well for Byun is about to be 
uh, dismissed as his third base as well. Just gets annihilated for the meantime. Bjorn has to focus his attention up here in the top, and that's kind of the problem with this gold base, as it allows Trap to just come so far forward. The SCV pull uh, is a very necessary right there. Right now, he's already lost seven workers trying to attack in here, getting on top of the Colossus. He will snipe one, but that was a very costly trade. GG is called. <laughs> Unfortunately, guys, I am not related to Cyril, as uh, my diamond rank does attest to. I'm also not from Texas. I'm from California, but thank you. Getting back in to the game. <laughs> you guys are crazy. But getting back into the game here, uh, we've at, at this point in game number four, we've kind of we kind of have the choice of strategies uh, picked uh, picked out. There's not really going to be too much uh, differences between them beyond kind of taking out his aggression on a poor helpless robot right there you can tell he's frustrated from the last couple of games and he's definitely ready to uh he is definitely ready to tie the series back up now we did say that this is a macro map but sometimes the macro maps are the most aggressive maps you will ever see it's like you know what these uh, kind of reminds me of ox uh, oxide just a little bit uh with these map um rock placements caster i think lying to us I do, i'm always lying to you guys i'll say oh bjorn's ahead traps ahead and then uh that person loses it's like the caster curse except it's just me lying to you for the betting odds that i don't have Once again, though, Trap going with the old mantra. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, as he will be going straight back into the Twilight Council here. The question is, because he has been going for a much faster Robo Facility, will he use this one aggressively? I think it would be pretty beholden to him, because as you can kind of see, once again, Bjorn is... Uh, Uh, Bion is just uh, a little bit blind here. He's uh, this is kind of normal for him. He doesn't really like to uh, re really like to scout because honestly, he feels like his build order is good enough. Sorry, I'm trying to like I just caught a glimpse of chat here. Uh, do you play V1 yourself, mate? A little, a uh, little bit. It's been a while. I haven't been at home for the last two months, so uh, not recently. Anyway, Trap did move out with these Adepts. He did get a little bit of a soccer play right now. Uh, the Medvac, which was set up for the Widowmine drop, is instead just going to be here to push this away. Now he's just going to load up the Marines and try and do a little bit of pressure himself while he's also getting the Banshee in the backfield. Does look like though trap gonna be a little bit spicier here as he's going straight up to three gates. So he should be able to deflect this, no problem. Uh, I don't know if Bjorn's wrists are fixed per se, but he definitely has been getting support for them, so uh, he's definitely better than he was. Trap though, getting ready for his own little move out here. The medevac just waiting for an opening, which unfortunately he's just not gonna get here. We do have one siege tank on the field. He's supply blocked himself a little bit, so that second siege tank is not gonna happen for until that supply depot finishes. That's gonna give Trap a little bit more room to breathe. 
I think you can, yeah, you can blink up there right on top of that medevac. Uh, using the adept as well as a buffer to uh, bait the uh, siege tank shot. That was pretty smart from Trap. That's going to allow him to get in here into the natural and just deny a lot of mining. As well, five workers have gone down. The SCVs are pulled to deal with it. One stalker going down. The second one getting dangerously low. So, uh... Trying to keep his blinks alive for the meantime. He will lose a couple of stalkers needlessly. Uh, at the end of the day, you can't argue with results. 17 workers going down. That is a very, very good push. Still taking a look at it. Stim has not started at all right now so that is not going to be out to help defend this he does have more siege tanks though so that will definitely help out i don't think though trap really needs to move in at this point this is starting to turn into fort knox with the amount of siege tanks that he has out you can even kind of see taking a bit of damage there so from here Yun is only on two bases. All he needs to do is get that soft contain in. A uh, bit of a risky move right there. I think he did lose a stalker for it. The blink in. That might have been a small mistake. As he does have to just instantly bleed. Uh, uh, leave that base without getting too much done. Only one siege tank going down during all of that. Trap is not done, however. He is going to keep this rolling. Now he's going to try the double prong harassment strategy. As he will be sending these stalkers into the front. Actually going to send the warprism into the front as well. See, I really would have liked to see him uh, take the zealots into the main base. Even if they didn't do a ton of uh, worker kills, they could always drag the widow mine shot into the uh, mineral line which would have been pretty nice but uh trap just not gonna push his luck at the very li at the very least i would like to see him kind of keep some stalkers out on the map for map control uh, just so that he can kind of pick off some of these units as beyond decides to move across the map But, uh, you know what? Trap is Trap is the professional. He knows what he's doing here. As we do see... He's trying to find this army. Warprism does manage to get in here, but losing it, as well as all of those zealots. Not, not the best uh, trade there. For a trap, small mistakes here and there might cost him. But, but uh, other than that, he also has storm on the way. It's pretty much all he's making right now. He doesn't really have the gas to get high templars just yet. Does he have it out? Okay, he already does have a couple. Of, nice, nice. Ain't gonna go down. He just, uh, Beyond really just wants to know what he's dealing with here. He wants to get that drop into the main base. That's just not gonna happen anytime soon. Supplies are relatively even here. Beyond taking a very slight army supply lead. Worker supply still in Trap's favor, but again, we have mules. Um,. Once again, Bjorn has a really late third base here, so he's not going to be mining super efficiently right there. But here we go. Trap is going to be looking to get quite a bit done. Liberators are in position 
to help out here, but there is a lot of storm energy riding in this uh, war prism. He almost lost it. That was really far forward. But trap gonna rotate around behind the liberator line. What am I? doing what they can but not really getting a lot done trying to drop the storms he gets it on the siege tanks and while that does a bit it just really doesn't do a lot of good concave for Bjorn as well you we did see the drop go into the main base uh, for Bjorn so he's actually going to start breaking his way through and Trap is actually going to be completely distracted here so this might be Bjorn's chance and she better overcharge, keeping that stalker alive. So that will actually be enough to kill off that uh, that drop and trap. Pushing on through here, the immortals just doing a lot to the marauders. Jeez, this is action all over the place here. As Bjorn does lift up his orbital command. Question is. Will Trap have enough with this reinforcement of zealots of a couple of high Templars? Yeah, you gotta make Archons at that point. That would've been really weird. Oh, really weird to see if he uh, tried to tried to just build up storm energy here, but the Widow Mines not gonna get their shot. Good save by Trap, and he will be able to clean up the rest of them. The Immortals do lose their shields. Honestly, I don't know if there's enough here for Trap to really finish this out. Uh, some decent kiting here from Bjorn might be all he needs. A good pickup there on the Immortal, though. The juggle has begun. Unfortunately, though, it's just not enough here. SCV is going to get pulled. And Bjorn will be able to force this back. Another Immortal going down. This game. Like, seriously, this game is uh, bad four predictions as uh, we do see uh, trap gonna be going up to plus two as beyond once again skipping the armory skipping the additional engineering bay he is gonna be at a such a supply deficit and he can't really do too much he's gonna have to rely on this doom drop this is pretty much his only chance to get back into it Warpers are going to try and make its way in here, but those Immortals are super low on health. He's going to lose one right away. At the end of the day, he does take out one of the Medivacs. The second one should fall relatively soon. I say, I like the idea here from Bjorn to drop into the third base instead. But again, he just doesn't really have enough. A secondary attack gets deflected. Trap is just at not necessarily critical mass, but he's got that big Zerg energy. Uh, you know, he has just enough to defend uh, multiple locations. Plenty of storm energy available here. It's going to blanket some of that army. Being very persuasive right here as the concave is pretty good. Trying to mitigate some of that damage. Uh, oh, the zealots are stuck. So the stalker is going to take a little bit more additional damage than they should have. But at the end of the day, 14 more workers going down. It's currently 71 to 34. And there you have it. GG is called Trap. Going up to a very quick match point here. Down here in the bottom right side, he is looking to close things out. Give him your energy, give him your time, and give him your love. As we have the Africa Freaks. In Trap. And his opponent, up here in the top left, he needs to get the ball rolling. He's got to start to pull it back for the reverse sweep. Give it up for the Shopify Rebellions. Bjorn.
already we got a little bit of a nuisance probe right here so kind of just taking a look at the map uh, it looks like we got a lot of different rock fixtures here just making it difficult to uh, kind of get a good concave uh, difficult to push in here i think a force field would be absolutely beautiful right there uh, the aesthetic as well this reminds me of I think in old Heart of the Swarm map, I'm getting kind of like boardwalk vibes. Just a little bit mixed with like Oahu from Legacy or excuse me, Ohana from uh, Wings of Liberty. Those are the two things I'm getting here, but trap that probe's not at home. I don't think I I don't think he's going to really do anything with it. Isn't reverse sweep if he's down 3-0? Well, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a discount reverse sweep, you know? You can't always go for the premium uh, reverse sweep. Sometimes you got to go to the bargain bin. Uh, have you seen the economy recently? We need to, uh, we need to uh, tighten our belts, man. Can't get the fancy vacuum. We just got to get a broom. Already a trap is going to send a couple of adep these adepts across the map to do a little bit of harassment. I think Bjorn being very, very cautious as we do have the CC coming on in on the high ground. So I think Bjorn kind of has the idea that something cheeky is coming his way. And yeah, this is pretty much just comp confirming it here. Nice little move from trap. He's trying to... Uh, Bait the widow mine with that, uh, with the shade, and this is actually going to be really cool. It's like a, it's like a blink, but you actually have to think about it. Unfortunately, though, thinking is not going to do too much for a couple of these adepts. They will go down. Still, that last marine doing his solemn duty, and all this is doing is this is a uh, trading out so that he can prepare for this little fella right here. The Dark Shrine. I think right now Bion needs to go for a Raven. Just a most random thing. Additional supply depots required. Oh my god, he actually does decide to go for the Raven. I guess the Adepts kind of gave away the fact that uh, Dark Templars are next. But uh, the Raven's not going to be out just yet, so these guys might be able to get a kill or two. What minds as well, trying to go across the map, getting a little bit of damage done during all of this. But that is just another thing for Bjorn to uh, take his attention away. Scan goes down, 1DT will fall. Honestly? I think that was pretty good for Bjorn. You know, he lost a lot of Marines, but there's not really a huge follow-up here from Trap. Instead, just going to go straight up to a third Nexus. Uh, he's teching up. He's getting the warp. He's uh, getting the warp prism in, so that he could probably do like Archon drops with these DTs. But yeah, I think Bjorn is actually pretty stable here. Oh, the Raven. This is Bion's biggest mistake, however. He doesn't have his detection anywhere nearby. Does he have a scan available? He does have one. But so far, that's not going to save him. As he does use it up here, the Siege Tank doing more harm than good. It says zero down here, but we know better. He'd actually killed some of his own SCVs. Overall, that was a nice little play here from Trap. But he might lose the War Prism if he's not careful. 
behind this as well we got a huge power up here three additional gateways coming down forge as well for those upgrades and Bjorn still on two bases here only just now getting his third racks up he is not making any more siege tanks going straight back into widow mine production i don't know Yeah, now, now you're going to have Archons available here. Blink is finished here. Charge is going to start up immediately after. The Raven going to get a couple of quick cheeky kills, but... Really want a little bit more here. Yeah, right now, kind of just a small power up phase between these two guys. Uh, it looks like Beyond does want to be the kind of one to blink first, but unfortunately, Trap sees everything right now. All he has to do is station a couple of stalkers, and he should be able to get two nice pickups here. He does unload. He does get the unload down, which is nice, as that does save him a little bit of trouble. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's hard to see. The Raven's still kind of hanging out there to get a little bit more done since it's not really having a lot of utility with this army anymore. Uh, there's no Colossi to shut down. There's no... Uh, uh, you know what? One thing I have actually noticed, I haven't seen uh, too many anti-armor missile um, builds from Terrans these days. I know Raven isn't really the most useful thing, but I would... Especially since Bion is kind of going for this uh, low upgrade strategy. I would like to see him kind of use that anti-armor missile just because he does have that Raven. Just so that he doesn't get absolutely overwhelmed in the fight. A bit of a feed back right there. Yana getting a pretty good concave, and the sea tank's actually going to be protected by the force field, so he will be able to set up a, a pretty decent uh, position right here. A shield battery overcharge just about to close out. As we do have a small zealot warp in here, going to try and deny some mining on that third. But now is kind of the most dangerous moment here for a trap he's just got to really be cost efficient in shutting this down we do have the warpism about to drop the high templar only one storm available and he uses it on the siege tank yeah at this point Byun, he still has a relatively decent sized army even though he did lose quite a bit there but he's going to have to fall back. He's going to have to kind of take an engagement on the high ground, I feel, which is dangerous because he does have this low ground expansion. But look, uh, his dog actually uh, came to support him. So, you know, the love of, uh, love of a dog might be enough to bring this back for him. Okay, never mind. As we do have a pretty big zealot. Warp in in the main base going to take away a lot of attention here from the front and that is going to be traps uh, Ideal moment to strike. He's got plenty of storm energy available to him. There's the anti-armor missile So he's going to take a little bit of a better fight versus the immortals, but the storms just forcing him back the stalkers wailing away on the natural the forces on the high ground actually getting stuck behind the SEVs which are now pulled into the fray. Now, Trap has to be a little bit careful because he doesn't have a ton of an uh, anti-air. These stalkers gotta be careful fighting around the Liberators, but at the end of the day, 20 workers going down. That War Prism still alive in the main base. And 
the third is under fire here. A bunch of fresh mules are lamb to the slaughter. And that, my dear ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a trap victory.